We're going to read out, probably finish off, behind the scenes information related to Doctor Who's classic serial, The Invasion. Who knows what we'll talk about in episode 7 and 8. Hopefully the episodes themselves, actually. May as well do that. Here we go. The prologue of the novel, Iceberg, opens during the Cybermen invasion in this story. The Cybermen in that novel are said to be from Planet 14, which was first mentioned in the invasion by the Cyber Planner. The comic story The World Shapers also picks up on the Planet 14 reference, though it explains it away in a very different way. Since the invasion takes place in either in the late 1960s or 1970s, see unit dating controversy, and no other televised Cybermen story had taken place prior to 1986, the date of the 10th planet, the Doctor must have met the Cybermen before in an untelevised story. Derek Schoen would later produce the series, making him the only producer in the classic series to also be credited as a writer, though others would write for the series under pseudonyms. This is the first incomplete serial since the Celestial Toymaker for which no telesnaps are known to exist. Another actor was cast as Corporal Benton, but he was constantly late and delayed shooting. Douglas Canfield sacked him and gave the part to John Levine, an untrained extra and monster actor, who we noticed got on very well on set with Patrick Trouton and Fraser Hines, having danced about in his Yeti costume for their amusement while shooting The Web of Fear. The unit extra played by Levine, with a distant co different costume to Benton, is still visible, crammed right at the back of shots behind more major guest characters. Levine had signed up to play an extra and ended up being a companion to Free Doctors. Douglas Canfield's wife, Sheila Dunn, was both the international and electromagnetic computer voice and the telephone operator. Fraser Hines takes credit for the kill where he was here graffiti. Douglas Canfield objected until Hines pointed out that the building was built by British workmen and they have fun on the job with things like that. Cybermats were to have appeared in this story. Would they appear in Revenge of the Cybermen a bit later? Could be with Tom Baker, I could be wrong. In addition to St. Paul's Cathedral, Douglas Canfield wanted to film the Cybermen marching outside Tower Bridge, the Houses of Parliament, and Hyde Park, as well as the entrances to several tube stations, but he ran out of time before the Sunday crowds became unwieldy. An action scene where Unit recaptures Professor Watkins had to be abandoned because there wasn't enough time to film it, but was reinstated by Ian Marta for the novelization. A scene in which Gregory is killed by the Cybermen in the sewers also had to be inserted into the same episode, because the character was originally shot by Benton during the battle. Rutledge was originally supposed to be forced into shooting himself by Vaughan. It was filmed for a cut before broadcast, presumably being too dark for family viewing, and is now lost. Ian Martyr's novelization reinstates the scene. The iconic shots of the Cybermen marching outside St. Paul's Cathedral were suggested by designer Chris Doyle John to Douglas Camfield. This is one of the first serials in which scenes are recorded out of order. This is due to the then improved videotape editing technology. According to Fraser Hines, Sally Faulkner's skirt kept getting blown up around her neck while climbing up the rope ladder to the helicopter. To avoid the same thing happening to his kilt, he remembered reading somewhere that the Queen had lead weight sewn into the hem of her skirt to stop this from happening to her. It so happened that Fraser's dresser was a keen fisherman who sewed some lead weights into his kilt. International Electronics Headquarters is actually the Guinness factory in action in Acton. According to Peter Halliday, once the free Guinness appeared, not much work happened in the afternoon. You know, I think we'll close it here and we'll just read out the rest in episode 7. We have gone for about 3 minutes and 40 seconds as of now. Thanks everyone, appreciate it very immensely. See you next time, if you're so inclined, of course.